Well, good morning, and welcome to church. And we'd also like to share Happy Valentine's to everyone. And so we'll uh, begin this time together by just uh, saying that uh, it seems like this is becoming a regular occurrence for us as we meet together online. Um, but that's okay. We're uh, able to be safe this way from the roads and um, not having to, to cancel church in some way where you can't have worship. And so we're glad that you guys can join us <clears throat> this morning. And uh, we'll take just a, a, a little bit of time to, uh, to worship and to just share what God has in store for us at this day. Uh, the one thing that I just wanted to share, um, you know, it's been three weeks that we've been doing this. So the last time we would have, been, would have met would have been uh, about mid-January. And we talked about doing the book Draw the Circle. Uh, the books are in. And some of you have responded back to me um, that we have this book in here now, Draw the Circle, that we're going to use beginning, well, this Wednesday, which is Ash Wednesday, um, as a 40-day prayer challenge for the church to interact with. Um, some folks have already said they uh, told me where to put the books. If you um, would still like the book, uh, or you, well, you do, <laughs> if you put your name down for it, uh, let me know uh, so I can get it to you. Um, maybe before Wednesday, we'll, we'll see how that works. Some folks are, are picking them up at church, and I put names of those. And so if you are a person that has a key to the church and you'd like to do it that way, just uh, let me know. And so uh, that is the, uh, the one announcement that I have uh, for this morning. Uh, let us pray that uh, next week we'll be able to join with one another uh, again. And um, if you would, I know choir practice is this Wednesday night. Uh, if some of you want to join me, we'll do a little bit of a brief Bible study um, or at least a celebration of Ash Wednesday on Wednesday evening. Um, let's try to make that closer to uh, um, 7.30. That way maybe if there's some choir members who have an option up at church, they can use that. Um, but we'll see how that goes. So um, let's just do that together. Let us uh, begin our time of worship. As we do so, let us pray. God of gods, we come to worship you today to hear your good news, to hear of faith, hope, and love. Ringing out from your kingdom, we know that doubt, fear, and hatred can shake even the strongest. Shape us into faithful, hopeful people. Fill us with your love that passes all understanding. We pray this together in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. We do have a hymn for the morning. It's going to be the only hymn that we have this morning because I have a video at the end that will sort of close us out together before our benediction. It's ha with happy voices singing. And uh, you know this song. It's a very cool song to sing um, as we ponder upon what it means to be happy people even in this day. Um, with ha happy voices ringing, thy children, Lord, appear. Their joyous praises bringing in anthem sweet and clear. For skies of gold and splendor, for azure rolling sea, for blossoms sweet and tender, O Lord, we worship Thee. And shall we not adore Thee with more than joyous song, And live in truth before Thee, all beautiful and strong? Lord, bless our souls, endeavor Thy servants true to be, And through all life forever to live our praise to Thee. We continually share um, in this particular moment in our church, even though we have not been together for three weeks, we're still in that mode to remind you of what it means to be a giving people. And when we give, it's as it says here, giving as an act of love. And it is an act of love. And so we just encourage you to continue to do the things that you are doing, and we just give you thanks for that. 
And in that, we will just honor God in a time of prayer. God, we do give you thanks for opportunities we have to give, to share, to uh, be whoever it is you want us to be. And that can be even giving of our time, especially on a Sunday morning like this where we're not having church in the building, but we're in our homes. And for some of us who are used to being back into the building, um, it could be a, a little different for us, and it can cause us to maybe not worship like we normally would, but it does look like there's a number of folks who have, have joined us today, and uh, we're just uh, glad to have them with us, and we just thank them uh, for their willingness to be a part of this time together. God, we just ask you just continue to help us in our acts of giving and the sharing that we do. For it's all in Christ's name we do pray. Amen. Our scripture for the morning will come from the book of 1 Corinthians chapter 13. Be reading verses 1 through 7 and then verse 13. Paul shares these words. If I speak in the tongues of men or of angels, but do not have love, I am only a resounding gong or a clanging cymbal. If I have the gift of prophecy and can fathom all mysteries and all knowledge, and if I have a faith that can move mountains but do not have love, I am nothing. If I, have, if I give all I possess to the poor and give over my body to hardship that I may boast, but do not have love, I gain nothing. Love is patient. Love is kind. It does not envy. It does not boast. It is not proud. It does not dishonor others. It is not self-seeking. It is not easily angered. It keeps no record of wrongs. Love does not delight in evil, but rejoices in the truth. It always protects, always trusts, always hopes, always perseveres. And now these three remain, faith, hope, and love. But the greatest of these is love. I'd like a little time for our, our prayer this morning. Be mindful of the joys and the concerns in front of our hearts and I guess we need to name it today that next week we need to be prepared to wish our happy birthday greetings to Lena. We haven't done that in the past few weeks. We haven't had a chance to share that, so today I thought we would. And uh, her birthday's coming up on the 24th. I know she's getting excited about it, so let us be mindful of that. Uh, of other concerns, uh, or other joys or other concerns, we just want to keep those in our mind uh, as well and uh, be thinking of folks that we have... Um, uh, as family, friends who might be dealing with a variety of things, um, especially those who are dealing with uh, the COVID virus and the effects of what it can bring. And I know we've seen some through our own um, uh, people that we know who are being affected by that as well. So we want to be mindful of those folks and just pray that they continue to, uh, to maybe regain strength, to get healthy, uh, to do better in the midst of all of this. And for those who are recovering and are in rehab, we want to be m mindful of them. And uh, for those who might um, just not be uh, able to get out in, in this weather uh, and do the things they like to, especially those that can't come to church, especially those who don't have the technology to be able to, uh, um, to worship with us in this day. Let us be mindful of those folks. Let us be mindful of the joys we have and, um, and everything. So let us go into the, to the Lord in a word of prayer. God, we do give you thanks for again for this day, for this time together. We give you thanks for the many blessings that you provide for us, even the blessings of, of cold, wintry weather. We just we know that it's it's uh, an inconvenience sometimes. We know that there's a lot of folks that just don't like it, uh, especially when it's ice. You know, we just see the danger and the uh, uh, terrible conditions that it brings. But you know, we're safe in our homes, and we're just. Uh, Glad to be able to worship today in, in the various places that we do reside. And um, we're thankful of those that are able to just uh, be with us. doesn't matter if they're in our homes here in Rockingham County in Harrisonburg or if they're as far south as Florida. We just want to um, thank you, God, that these folks can just join us in this day and that everyone can be uh, safe in their homes. 
God, we just uh, also thank you for birthdays, and we're just looking forward to uh, uh, doing some celebration with, with Lena and for many others who are celebrating their birthdays too, but we just know how tickled she gets when uh, we share um, uh, we share a little bit about her at times, and so we're just thankful for that. God, we just uh, ask that you be with those that are, are not doing very well today, who are sick, who are, are dealing with the virus in the hospital or wherever it might be, for those that are recovering from surgeries and still working through rehab, uh, for those that have had, had, had a spell and it's just got them into a place of rehab. We just lift them up to you, God, as well, and we ask that you bring comfort and healing and encouragement to them, and not only to them, but to their families as well who care for them in these days and are preparing to care for family members too. God, we just thank you for who you are. We thank you for the many blessings that you provide. And we thank you for this wonderful day that we can celebrate with those uh, special people in our lives. And it is that Valentine's Day. And God, you are just, uh, you are our special Valentine. And we want to thank you for the love that you have expressed and shared with us. And um, that you continue to do so in the midst of our lives. God, thank you for all you do. For it's in Christ's name we do pray. Amen. Like to share a story. A young man called his mother and announced excitedly that he had just met the woman of his dreams. Now, what should he do? His mother had an idea. She says, why don't you send her flowers and on the card you can invite her to your place for a home-cooked meal. He thought this was a great strategy and arranged a date for a week later. His mother called the day after the big date to see how things had gone. The, the evening was a disaster, he moaned. Why? Didn't she come over? Asked the mother. Oh, she came over, but she refused to cook. <laughs> that was not the kind of meal that she was thinking about, was she? You know, it's interesting to be doing this um, in this day and thinking about the videos that we see. And I hear, I see the delays because I'm watching on the screen over here what's on Facebook. And I know that Sherwin's earlips are watching it. can probably hear the music starting and everything. But it's, uh, it's interesting, isn't it? And, uh, but it's still the love that we have for one another in the midst of this uh, day that we have. I guess there's a couple of special days we need to think about this morning. One is that today is Valentine's Day, and we'll spend our focus mostly on that, or at least its intended meaning, and how that would apply to us as Christians. We should also be mindful that Wednesday, or Ash Wednesday, is the first day of the season of Lent. This season will be a particularly important time for us as Christians, as it, is encur it encourages us to be in a deeply reflective mindset, pondering upon the life and ministry of Jesus, as most importantly his death and resurrection and what that means for us as his people. And for each, they have the same underlying meaning, love. The latter ask us to reflect on the love that Jesus showed for each of us as he went to the cross and died for our sins. 
Think about this scripture. For God so loved the world that he gave his one and only Son that whoever believes in him shall not perish but have eternal life. That's a pretty familiar one, isn't it? And it's the, 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 the main focus of what Christ's mission was. We'd have to say that this was the ultimate act of love that someone can show, was it? To give his life for us. To lay down one's own life for those who are family, for those who belong to him. Jesus shared these words to his disciples and the people around him when he said, I am the good shepherd, and the good shepherd lays down his life for his sheep. Reminding them that that was the duty of the shepherd, was it not? That in everything that he was supposed to do it was to protect those sheep in the fields, no matter what it meant. And we recognize this as part of Lent. And we are to remind ourselves of this sacrificial act throughout this season and beyond. But you know, Valentine's Day also causes us to be reminded of what love is all about as well. It's traditionally seen as that day that we shower our spouse or significant other, such as maybe a fiancé or a dating partner, or maybe even that special crush. And yes, I know that we gave out cards and candy in elementary school, but I don't think it had the same kind of meaning of love, did it? And it becomes a day that candy makers and card distributors and flower growers look forward to because of all the money that will be spent on their products. And I thought about a couple of folks in church when I thought of this. I imagine florists really dread this day. The expressions of love are just a part of what this day is about. It's also a reminder to us of the importance of love, and the love that Christ showed to us is the most expressive of what love is all about. But we are his followers, and we are to demonstrate that love not just to the closest to us, but to everyone. Paul wanted to show this uh, show how this love is acted out by Christ's followers. You know, he's speaking to those who are part of the church at Corinth. And we know that the church at Corinth had a number of difficult issues that Paul was being forced to deal with. You know, previous to the chapter that we're looking at this morning, Paul was dealing with the issue of spiritual gifts in the church and the argument over which might be best, which was better to have, and in turn, who would be the better person. And so chapter 13 actually is an answer to that particular argument for Paul. In chapter 13, Paul wants to remind the church that it matters not what gift you have if you're not showing love to one another. Look at the first three verses when he says, If I speak in tongues of men or angels, do I not have, but do not have love, I'm only a resounding gong or a clanging, clanging cymbal. Our words mean nothing. It's just gibberish. It's just noise is all it is. If I have the gift of prophecy and can fathom all mysteries and all knowledge, but I have and I have a faith that can move mountains, but I don't have love, I'm nothing. And if I possess all that I if I give all I possess to the poor and give my body to hardship that I may boast, but I do not have love, I gain nothing. Love is important in the midst of everything that we do in every reaction and action that we share with other people and in other ways. Gifts are only useful if they're used in the proper way. Each fills a gap that is present when there are different users or different holders of the gifts. And each one is important and not better than the other. But Paul says it doesn't matter what gift you have. If you don't have love for those around you, those gifts are meaningless. Then he goes on to give this list of characteristics of what love is. Where he says love is patient. I'll just run through them quickly. Run it. Love is patient, kind. It doesn't envy. It doesn't boast and it's not proud. It doesn't dishonor others. It's not self-seeking. It's not easily angered. It keeps no record of wrongs. Love does not delight in evil but rejoices with the truth. It always protects, always trusts, always hopes always perseveres. Now you know we've heard these words from the text at weddings as we remind the couple of what it means to love each other. But Paul's real intent for these words is to remind the church how to love one another, how to treat one another, and to treat all of those around them, how to love each and every one just as his son Jesus, or his 
His, his Lord and Savior Jesus Christ did when Jesus went to the cross for everyone. For God so loved the world, not just one particular region or area. And these, get, these, these characteristics, they become who we are to be. And in each he says what love is. It's patient. And we know what that is. We know what patience is. It's difficult sometimes, but it's what we're called to have with one another. It's kind. It do, it's not as envious. It's, you know, it's not jealous. It's not boastful. And boastful and proud kind of have sort of a, 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 a similar meaning. When it says does not boast, boasting, you know, in the dictionary definition is a self-satisfaction about one's accomplishments, possessions, or abilities. That you are you're boasting, and as you go into the other one, which is proud, relates to being boastful. You're you're proud of what you have and you share that with everyone. All that everyone hears, all everything you've got, all that they've got and own and what they do and all these other things. And that's all they talk about, and in the midst of it all, he's saying that that's not love. That's just being boastful and proud. It's okay to have those things. It's when we put them in the first and for, when we put them in the forefront of our relationships. Love doesn't dishonor others. It's not self-seeking. That relates a little bit back to the proud and the boastful, doesn't it? That you're always about me and not the other. You know, in Jesus' upside-down, topsy-turvy world, he changed everything, and it was different from what they were used to at one point in time. It was about not seeking what was good for me, but what is good for other people. That doesn't mean we can't look to ourselves or for ourselves of what we need and, and the things we want. It's that others sometimes come first. Love is not easily angered. This day and time, we really need that word. That, that's characteristic, don't we? I think we get angry about everything. Love just keeps no records of wrongs, meaning that we're not constantly reminding someone of past indiscretions. Love doesn't delight in evil, but rejoices with the truth. And then he concludes, he says, love protects, it trusts, and it hopes, and it perseveres. Perseveres meaning continued in a course of action, even in the face of difficulty. And when we love one another, there, there are moments that it's not going to be easy, is it? And it's in those times that we persevere. It's in those times that we have hope for, for, for one another and the dreams that we have, that we trust one another, that we protect one another. Wow. It's not a small task, is it? It takes work. But this is the life we have settled on. We can have all the talent in the world. We can be the most gifted speaker or teacher. We can be the most giving of individuals. But if we treat people with contempt, we do not have the love of God. If we look down on others or disrespect others because of their looks, their language, their ethnicity, their places of origin, whatever it might be, their opinions or their dissenting opinions or whatever, we're not showing God's love goes back to not being easily angered or being patient, those type of things. And remember what Jesus said in Luke chapter 10, verse 27, when he said, Love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your strength, with all your mind, and then do what? Love your neighbor as yourself. Paul closes this lesson with these words, And now these three remain, faith, hope, and love, but the greatest of these is love. It's a little, about, a little bit like about eternity, isn't it? Because in this life, we need to have faith and hope and love. But in eternity with God, we don't need faith and hope, do we? We just live in love. Because in the end, it's about love. Because God is love.
And now the greatest of these three remain, faith, hope, and love. But the greatest of these is love. Go out into the world and show the love of Christ.